Absolutely, I think it makes a big impact on our team that, that we understand what we're doing is a lot bigger than what's going on just in that locker room, uh, individually and collectively with our team. And uh, we understand our fan base. It, it really, I mean, they've been there with us from day one, and uh, we appreciate everything they do. Uh, it's an awesome deal. We got a sellout crowd. I mean, obviously the stadium sold out, and I think more importantly, I think we all understand it's about a lot more than just what's in the stadium. I mean, we rec we're trying to represent all of Texas Tech alumni base and their friends and family uh, the right way and do things the right way, and along the way, hopefully, win some games. Just during the Red Light series, what did you learn from there, and I guess what are you kind of hoping to see if the guys kind of build momentum? Golly, it seems like it's been two years since the Red Black Series. It really does. I don't, you know, I, what I've learned is is Red Black Series was in the fall, and uh, it's been a couple of months since then, December, January, and uh, it's a long time ago. And really, right now for us, it, it feels very much like you're starting over a little bit. Uh, first team practice today. We've been in individuals and. Uh, but we're excited. I mean, we're excited about these two guys up here, Davis and Josh and the whole group collectively, and uh, excited about the opportunity to go compete. And uh, also, I think this group understands you got to go earn the right to win. And, and to do that, you better compete each day. And uh, I don't know if I answered your question, but Red Black Series, again, I, I don't know if I could tell you who won. I'd have to go look it up on a computer. And uh, I would bet on. Uh, Anyway, needless to say, I won't even go there. But it was, it is a, it was a while back, and at the same time, it's uh, you know, really it's it's exciting to get started the spring. I guess in terms of Davis and Steven and kind of Ryan and everyone, I guess how are you kind of seeing the pitching rotation uh, kind of showing up there, and then with, along with the relievers? I think that'll all evolve as we go here. I mean, we've really got some time to, for that to establish. If I had to say right now, it'd be Davis Martin, obviously, and Stephen Gingry, and, and then we'll figure out who's pitching on Sunday and Tuesday. Those guys, uh, those two spots uh, will be spots that, you know, we want to see some guys develop and be able to get, you know, a little bit deeper in games. And uh, Ryan Shedder's obviously in the mix. I think you said Ryan. And uh, excited about the possibility of some other guys competing for those roles. and. At the same time, we got a lot of confidence in the guys we've been rolling out there when you start talking about Davis and Gingry and Shedder and all those guys. And uh, But I think in college baseball, that evolves as you go. Not necessarily a question mark, but is there something that you're looking to looking forward to figuring out, like maybe bullpen or some other position like that in the, in the next few weeks? Before we Absolutely. Start? I mean, we've got three guys standing out there we feel like can play short. We really don't know who's going to play their opening day. I mean, if we had to say, we've got three guys behind the plate that can all catch and really don't know who will be back there for the long haul as far as that goes. And uh, so that's probably two things that going into this. Also, uh, just the fact that Josh will be the really the one returner that we finished up the year on our infield. And uh, there's a lot of new pieces out there when you start talking about position players and the bullpen. and how it all evolves, you know, tr really trying to uh, shorten the game with the bullpen, how that evolves. And, you know, what we're going to really try to take a shot at developing some guys as starters, and then we'll go from there as far as putting them back in the bullpen if we need to. And, uh, but as far as collectively, the nine guys on the field, obviously you want to know, you want to have an idea of what you're doing there. We've done it before where we've played two shortstops as recently as two years ago, and that's fine too. Uh, really just try to put together what the best matchup is for that day. Is Michael going to be one of those that might work it short, or is, would he move back to second? As far as shortstop goes, if uh, one of those other guys look like they can do it, he'd probably move back to second. Right now, uh, he's getting the opportunity like he did in the fall to play short. and uh, Obviously, the tools are there and to play either one. Uh, the neat thing about Michael Davis is he's he's fine with playing anywhere on the field. He just wants an opportunity to go compete, and uh, I don't think there's anything there where he's saying, "Hey, I have to play short." And 
or I got to play second. I mean, he go, he loves tracking balls down the outfield. What he really likes doing is playing catch. So that's uh, that's a lot of fun to coach. In terms of catches, what have you seen from uh, Clay and Matt and Braxton so far? Well, again, we've been in individuals. Uh, all those guys are plenty capable. Uh, and so really what you're talking about is getting them back there, letting the guys throw to them. Uh, I think all the guys are fine with throwing to all of them as far as that goes and really see how the continuity is between the, the pitcher-catcher relationship there. And uh, those, those guys have come a long way receiving. They've all done a really good job. They're all really hard workers. Uh, makeup's off the chart with all three of them. Uh, you know, I, we really liked what we had in 14 when we had Redmond and Floyd and uh, were able to split time with those guys and they really embraced each other and helping each other and that could be very well the way we go into this one. Just when you're looking at a catcher, what are you looking for specifically? It's the guy that can catch or see and kind of throw the ball pretty well or I guess you're looking for a guy that can kind of call the game or I guess what are you kind of looking for? Well, that depends on the rest of your team. I mean, you know, if you're... <laughs> It really depends on that. If you're not, if nobody's getting on, you could just put your big bopper back there that could catch and catch the ball. And uh, it's uh, obviously there's a lot of intangibles back there. We all think of the best, you know, of all time when you think of of what a good catcher brings. They need to be a leader. Uh, they need to be able to play catch at a high level. Uh, and obviously, there's again, I think each team dictates each day even can dictate what you're looking for back there but you want to be able to play catch at a high level probably the first thing uh that comes to mind for me how would you compare this team to maybe last year's team i don't know that i really would uh when you start talking about comparing i don't know really what it does for us to compare uh i guess you could compare the schedules if you wanted to uh, I don't think it's uh, something that's really even – I don't know that it's necessary. Uh, a lot of times you can look back and you go, yeah, okay, we had this guy and we're moving this guy in there. Uh, collectively is what we're trying to do. I mean, we're trying to win games collectively as a group and uh, play the game the right way. Uh, if I had to compare, we're talking about a lot of people. When you're talking about Tanner Gardner, Ryan Long, Mashinsky. And I'm gonna leave some guys out there. You see what I mean? So Hargrove, Garcia, uh, that'd be a longer press conference than we're probably ready for. Uh, but I can tell you this: there's plenty, there's plenty ability and talent in our locker room to do whatever these guys set their mind to. But uh, I think also there's uh, there should be an understanding in there that not one guy can do it. I mean, you got to do it collectively. You got to go play the game the right way. It's just kind of the way our game's built. I mean, it's. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but you got to do you got to do a lot of things as a team the right way. Who are the, who are the guys that are battling for time at first? Uh, you know, we could move a lot of guys over there. Really anticipate Cameron Warren being our guy over there. Cameron had a really good summer. He's healthy for probably the first time since he's been here. Uh, if it's not Cameron, like Beck's playing over there today. He probably doesn't even know that right now as we speak. He hadn't taken a ground ball over there since we've been back. And, uh, but he played some over there in the fall. And that's for the sake of an inner squad, having a guy over there. And, but really anticipate uh, Cameron being able to drive some runs in and play first. I guess in terms of John McMillan, I guess how have you seen him progress? I know one thing you talked about last year is him kind of separating balls and strikes. How have you kind of seen him kind of get better this year? What a unique talent. I mean, you're talking about a guy can pitch and hit. And, uh, you know, he – unfortunately, from a hitting side, he, you know, he had whatever injury he had in the fall and kind of set him, set him back a little bit. Probably the biggest thing right now is he's healthy. And, uh, and he doesn't have anything going on where he, you know, can't get his work in each day. And uh, he's done a good job. Probably the biggest thing, like yesterday, his last round uh, – his last round is just, you know, he, he's just not taking a whole he, – he's making them all count, probably the biggest thing. You see him pitching and hitting this year as well? He throws 98. So, yeah, I would uh, <laughs> dang sure think he's going to pitch. Uh, we're actually – he's starting the inner squad today. And he's a guy that if uh, he can go establish the fastball, he'll be in a rotation without a doubt.
mentioned the schedule earlier. You've got a lot of really strong non-conference opponents this year. Is there any one team you're looking forward to playing the most this year? Probably the biggest thing is that we're really excited about is our team. Uh, we get excited about playing every day. We really like – baseball is a unique game. You have to respect your opponent. you got to respect the game. Otherwise, a lot of uh, crazy things might happen as far as that goes. Uh, we open up with Maine, so we need to be excited about those days as far as that goes. But the body of our schedule, there is some challenging stretches in there. I'd probably be uh, – it wouldn't be right to say, you know, we're our Big 12 schedule is as challenging as, a, I mean, our league's a really good league, and we're always excited about going and playing those league games. And uh, but our non-conference schedule also, there'll be a time to talk about that. But uh, what we really, I mean, we set out to do this a long time ago. It feels like a long time ago, was to uh, have people come watch our games because of what we're doing and have guys, you know, we don't really want you to be able to leave your seat. I mean, we want you to be having to sit there and watch Davis and Josh swing the bat and pitch. And uh, those guys, that's really what we're shooting out to do is go, go play the game the right way. I didn't mean to, like, not answer that exactly right. But, uh, and I, I, I'm excited about inner squad. I mean, if we've, we're going to inner squad at 415, and the doors are open now, and so – we're, we get excited about playing no matter what day. And I think that's been something about our guys is they understand that you need to play the game the right way no matter what day you're playing. Uh, and then obviously there's times where you, you know, there's, there's times where you need to seize the day a little bit. And uh, that'll be fun trying to do that also. Do you think, I mean, I know he's been on the staff anyway, but anything different with Matt as a pitching coach, I mean, that you've seen with the pitchers or anything like that? Well, uh, no, I hadn't seen anything really different. I mean, both guys are still on staff. Uh, there's a lot of communication between Ray and Matt, uh, Matt and our staff, our staff and Ray. All that's uh, still in place as far as communication goes. I think time will tell on that. Would really like, again, like to see some guys. Uh, I mean, we obviously we like to have three or four established starters. I mean, like to run four guys out there just like Gingry. Hey, this guy's going to be all you want today, and that's what we're looking forward to seeing. Kind of touching on coaches real quick now, what is it you think it means to have Hunter Redmond be able to join the staff? Our guys really like Hunter. They, I don't know exactly what they call him. What do y'all call him? Hog. Hog. They call him Hog, and he's a. Uh, you know, he, he's a lot of fun to have around the clubhouse. He's seen a lot of Big 12 baseball, seen a lot of baseball. Uh, we've said it before, this program means a lot to Hunter. Uh, these guys mean a lot to Hunter. Uh, playing the game the right way means a lot to Hunter. He, he's the right guy to have. So with the way last year went, I guess, is it just nice to be back healthy? Oh, absolutely. I mean, during that injury, not being able to play catch for a little bit, I mean, all I wanted to do was play catch. So. Uh, it gives me a new aspect of, you know, just coming out here like a scrimmage today. Most juniors, this is going to be like a, just kind of walk in the park, walk through. You know, I'm excited. I'm ready to go out there and throw these guys, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it just gave me a different outlook on uh, everything that I get to do day to day. So you kind of mentioned in the summer that you didn't really throw as much. How much did that help you in terms of just maybe having your arm a little bit rested? No, uh, everything. I mean, I've been able to take two months off in the summer, like you said, and then uh, I've been throwing seven days a week since. I mean, my arm's in shape, my arm's feeling great, you know, um, it's huge. Add anything to the, to the pitching right before? No, same, same. You know, be singing the ball, you know, trying to go both sides of the plate, change up working in and around, and then a uh, curveball uh, occasionally. I mean, it's going to be the same as we've been doing the whole time, so. Now you, you've worked with Clay a couple of years now, and obviously you have the ball, but What's it like working with a new catcher back there specifically right now, you guys, with uh, three different guys you're going to be dealing with? Well, actually, I threw to Clay every day in the fall. Every time we have it in inner squad, I might have thrown to Zane once, Berg once, um, and Zane, I've, I think every almost every start I was with him, or with Clay, excuse me. And then I, so I think, I mean, we're on the same page all the time. He knows what I want to throw. Uh, he knows where to line up, you know, behind the plate for setting up pitches, you know, I mean, I don't think we're going to miss a beat. How about behind you in the infield? I mean, I know, I know you got Josh there, and, and Mike will be there. I mean, Klein even. But does it seem like a, a different group at all for you guys? Or 
Uh, not too much. I mean, like we had it all fall to get used to each other. I mean, that's when we're kind of feeling everybody out, uh, who can do what. I mean, they can expect a bunch of ground balls from me, so obviously I have to work uh, very well with them. But like I said, we've had all fall to fix those kinks, and I think uh, this is kind of just we're really starting to get ready to go, so this isn't the time to kind of figure people out. I think we're all ready to go in that aspect. What expectations do you have for yourself for turning this season? Um, you know, I mess with Gingry all the time. I uh, told him I'm going to be better than him, you know. And, I mean, that's that's what you're going to get out of the rotation this year. I mean, we have five, six, seven guys that, like Ty Lock said, could start. I mean, we're all competitive. We all like to compete with each other. And uh, competitiveness b between us is just going to make us better on the field. So uh, we're all excited to get ready uh, to go um, and try to be better than Ging. What's the difference between, I mean, I know you work with Matt, but what's the difference being on the mound during a visit between Matt and Ray? Uh, Coach Avery is really good at just calming me down. He usually just come out there and talk, you know, just about anything, you know. And uh, I think Gardner's the same way. I don't think we're going to really miss too much uh, of a beat there. You know, uh, we've worked with Gardner the last two years with pitch calling. I mean, I talked to him more about uh, logistics of the game, hey, well, why we're going to throw this to this guy, why we're going to do that to that guy. Um, and then again, Hayward's still around to help me with my mechanics and other aspects that I need help with. So I think it's it's really good. I mean, it's worked great so far. What's the main thing you look for on the first day of practice? Is it energy? Is it something different than maybe? Because obviously you can't really do that much from the first day compared to all those other days. I guess what are you looking for against from your team the first day? Uh, just competing against each other. You know, I hope I hope it's competitive. I hope it's a close game. You know, in the inner squad, I hope we throw strikes, pound the zone, uh, play clean defense, you know, just all the things that we have have been working on uh, during individuals. I mean, you can ask Josh, they've probably taken 1,000 ground balls, you know, since, since individuals. So, I mean, from that aspect of the game, playing clean, uh, not walking very many people, I'm, I figured that would probably be the best. Kind of what have you seen from uh, John McMillan in terms of just watching him pitch, or I guess have you seen him get better and throw stronger, hit better? Uh, he actually, um, hitting-wise, he's done a lot better, like Todd Luck said, of separating balls and strikes. I mean, he's getting back to it. His injury kind of slowed him up a little bit. But, I mean, I know more than anybody that that, that can happen. You know, you can come back and you need to kind of fix some kinks. And so, uh, yeah, he um, he's separating balls and strikes a lot better. Uh, curveball, I threw a couple curveballs in the dirt to him. He just spit on him. So, you know, I mean, he's doing a lot better at that. And, um, again, facing this rotation that we have with all these guys, I mean, our, our hitters are going to get better and better every day. <clears throat> it's almost expected at this point. I, nobody's even asked about it. But um, you guys are preseason top five and basically everything. Uh, what is the feeling in the locker room with all the praise that you guys are getting going into the season? Uh, I mean, it's it's probably cool for the freshmen to be like, well, I'm on a top five team. You know, I got to do that freshman year. Uh, but, I, I mean, having Sam Houston beat us on our own place, it's a real kick to the stomach. I mean, all the – Juniors especially, because freshman year, we pretty much did everything we wanted to do. Uh, kind of ran through the Big 12 pretty well. I mean, we went through our regional, super regional, and we made it to Omaha. So we thought that's how it is every year, you know, and that kind of just brings new energy, new focus for at least all the juniors. And I think that trickles down to the sophomores, because, I mean, they had to experience that last year too. And I think the freshmen are kind of having that same feeling. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're just ready to get going, man. And like Ty Lock said, we're not really looking forward to any certain series. We're not looking forward to TCU. I mean, we got to play Maine first. We got to beat them four times and then move on to the next person. So, um, yeah, taking a day at a time for sure. How do you kind of, I guess, find a balance with that maybe enthusiasm freshmen can get from, you know, those good vibes? And obviously, you don't want to take that away and be too much of a Debbie Downer. But yeah. how do you kind of keep that uh, going, but also kind of keep things in perspective? I mean, the juniors, I don't know if you all will be able to see it, but I mean, the juniors are all sarcastic. You know, we joke around. We like to have fun because uh, that's how the juniors were when we were freshmen. Juniors and seniors, I mean, they had a great time. They knew to have fun. Like, I mean, baseball is a game where if you're serious 24-7, it's going to be tough to play. Um, so I think we've tried to mimic that from Stephen Smith, from Ryan Mosley, Nisloni, all those guys where – in between games, like, yeah, we're having a great time in the dugout, we're having a good time, but like, hey, when it's, when it's your time to go up and perform, you got to go up there and perform, you got to get serious, you got to go. Um, so, yeah, from that aspect, I think I think we're trying to get the freshmen to understand that, like, there is a time and place to have fun, and then there's a time and place to be serious and get things done.
I know Coach Tadlock doesn't like to look back a lot, but how much do you feel like you guys will look back towards that regional against Sam Houston just to kind of remind you of what can happen if you don't? I think that was mostly the fall. I think everybody kind of understood, like, okay, this is where we're at with that. I mean, it's a new season. You can't think about last year. Um, the only thing I could say is maybe just – when we do get back in that scenario, if we do get back in that scenario and we have a good season again, um, just to like not look over anybody. Like I said, we play Maine, four game set, you know, we got to take them as serious as we take any other team. And I think that's pretty much where that will come into play most. But we're not going to say like, hey, let's, let's make sure we don't do like what we did at Sam Houston State. That's not being said at all. I mean, it's just you got to know that every team can beat you at this point. Josh, we'll start with the, the same thing I, I asked him. It's kind of expected around here. You were actually in the stands when they advanced to the College World Series, so you, you enjoyed that as a fan, and then you had to go through the frustrations of last year. How do you try to avoid that going into this year with so much hype? Uh, I think it's just more of us taking each day and trying to win each day. Um, Sam Houston last year, we beat them on that Saturday. Had to play them twice. It's always hard to beat a team twice, and then I guess a little doubt set in on that Monday, but I think it's more just trying to take each day at a time, focus on that on that opponent that day, and not try to overlook anybody. How many ground balls do you think you've fielded so far? You're talking about life or just this year? Oh, just, just, just during it. <laughs> just this year and individuals. Man, it, it's ridiculous if you think about it. Probably 100, 200 a day. We're just trying to knock out all the kinks, get ready. It's going to be fundamentally sound when the season comes. It's gotten to a point where you remember the ones you fumbled. Oh, yeah, we always compete with each other. Who misses the most that day pretty much gets ragged on the most. But, I mean, I try not to miss any. I know that's everybody's goal pretty much. So we just make it a competition between ourselves. You no know, coach uses the term competition, I guess. How do you kind of see the competition around the infield? Because I know, obviously, you've kind of at least earned your spot from what he said a couple times. I guess, where, where do you kind of see everyone else on the infield? I just like watching them compete, going out there every day, trying to win that spot. Um, there hasn't been a day yet where someone got out there lacks a day school. It's always high intensity, just going out there to try to compete and win that spot. I guess I'll be kind of seeing the pitching staff of all. I know Davis kind of mentioned it. He's not a ground ball guy. Do you see a little bit more ground ball pitchers now? Oh, yeah. I mean, going up against these guys hitting perspective, I know we have one of the best staffs in the country, so it's going to make us better offensively. But then when we're competing and they're getting us out, I mean, a lot of ground balls trying to keep the ball on the ground because we can make plays with pretty solid defense behind our pitchers. Out of all the underclassmen, I guess, who have you kind of seen step up so far? Gabe Holt had a really good fall. I've never seen somebody so fast on the base pads. It's ridiculous, honestly. He could beat out a ground ball at first base if they're taking it slow. Where has he played so far? Second base. Second base. Yeah. I guess uh, what what's kind of helped him along with the speed? That, is that a good thing for his range? Or I guess what, what, else, what else have you kind of seen from him? He's got a good glove. He goes out there and competes every day, just like everybody else in the infield. But I just really like watching him play, watching him get on the base pads and get a single. And it's pretty much either a double or triple every time, just because he can steal second, steal third. With a lot of high preseason rankings, it seems like the baseball fan base around the community is growing every single day. So what's it like to go out and play come February 16th with a huge Red Raider baseball fan base? Oh, it's going to be unbelievable, honestly. I mean, when we get out here and it's just rocking, that fuels us on the field. Um, I mean, these preseason rankings, you look at them, it's awesome, but it puts a big target on our back. So we can't take any day lightly. we got to win every day. So what's it been like to see Cam healthy? Oh, it's awesome. Just that guy, he's played with a few injuries, shoulder, and then tripped up against Arizona and hurt his shoulder again. Uh, seeing him healthy is awesome. He's one of those guys that's going to go out there and have fun every single day. Um, he competes. and. I mean, we're in individuals together, so it's just me and him all the time. So, I mean, we just constantly try to make each other better. I'll throw it in the dirt on purpose and try to make him pick it and rag on him if he doesn't. But it's just all to make him better. It's just fun to see him healthy. So what do you kind of expect from the first day of practice? For the first day, just people to come out and compete with high energy. Not to see anyone lax today at school, just come out and have fun, really. Because if we make it too much of a job, then... We're going to see more failure than successes. And baseball is a game of failure. So if we come out with high energy and accept that, we are going to fail. But to have fun while doing it, it should be a good day.
know you guys spend a lot of time together, but you also were playing in the same summer league. I don't know if you were on the same team, but how much does that help you? With oh, that's just – that's for bragging rights, really, coming in here. And I hit a home run off Erickson, and he doesn't hear the end of it, but he also struck me out looking, so I don't hear the end of that. So we always go back and forth messing with each other. But I played with McMillan and McDonald. We had a blast. But it's also fun to play with other players from other teams. Played with some Arkansas guys, some Texas guys, TCU guys. So now we got relationships with them, so it just makes it more fun when it comes time to play those guys. Is there anything you pick up from those guys? Obviously, baseball is a pretty you know, standard sport all the way around, uh, technique wise, but anything you can learn from those other perspectives? Oh, yeah. When, when you're playing with people, you're always watching to see what they do. From a standpoint of you want to get them out, obviously, so you're going to look for kinks in their swing, but you also see something good, you're like, oh, I'm going to try that. You know, and so that, that's what makes the summer fun. It's like working with those guys, asking what their perspective is at the plate, what they're trying to do with the ball. It's fun.